Almond here to give us our next talk. Hello, everybody. I was the American Physical Society Outreach Intern this summer. <coughs> I'm Almond Gill. I just graduated from Sonoma State in California with my physics undergrad, and I'm headed to engineering grad school for a master's in aerospace engineering in the fall, which is also why I chose this topic for my outreach project. It's, um, I designed an app that shows the relation between physics and engineering. So um, I'll be going over my motivation for this and the language I use for it, the content and design, my experience with it, and of course, acknowledgments. So my motivation was um, I was given a lot of freedom by Becky and James. They told me, they asked me multiple times what I wanted to do and if I had a topic when I came in. And as I am switching from physics to engineering, I'm really curious because a lot of people will ask me why I'm doing that and I wanted to show them in one concise manner. Um, also, I think it's really important to show the relation between physics and engineering because it helps with um, more innovation in the two fields. And um, a lot of the current SP or APS outreach activities are more like um, paper-based, there's comics, there's a lot of printouts, and I wanted something that people could download and have on their phones and stuff. So this is what um, the outreach website is, it's called Physics Central. And as you can see, there's lots of different topics, lots of blogs and stuff you can read through. Um, this is Spectra. There's this really cool physics quest that goes with it. It's like this mailed in, like you get all these materials and you do activities and then you move on. It's really fun. But like I said, I wanted something a little more um, that you can download and have on your phone. So I decided to design the app. I wrote it in Python and I used the library called Kibi for it. Kibi is this great game design library, it has all of these capabilities that makes it easier. And Python is a high level language, which means it's more like human language. It's easier to define things in and to like use it. It's pretty intuitive. And um, since I've never designed a game before, I have used Python before, but never designed a game, I decided to go through a nice tutorial, which was only three hours long on YouTube, but it took me like over a week. And it was Flappy Bird, so I tried so hard. I'm not good at Flappy Bird, but I wrote it. I tried so hard for this picture to get a score better than zero, but I didn't. So, <laughs> there you go. That's, that's the best. I mean, it just died. I forgot to click it or something. And this is just like a quick um, example of the code. On the left is the Python code. Um, it's, but the, it doesn't, doesn't go much beyond this. Um, but the Kibi code goes for another like 300 lines. So that's all of the content. And this is calling onto the Kibi code. And then this will format everything. And to show, oh, okay, so the content, so I selected a few topics and I did a few interviews with people. The topics I chose that were obvious, like we can show how the physics concept led to the our engineering application or vice versa. Interviews I was suggested by a fellow intern that maybe I should talk to some people who have done both, work in both fields or switch. And my target audience for this app was older, like high school to college people who are deciding between the two or maybe both. And for the design, I did a lot of different versions. I was not happy with a lot of them. So I kept trying it. Um, it I wanted it to be adaptable, so it could be on Androids, iPhones, computer screens, which means lots of different resolutions. And things move around when you don't set them to be adaptable. So that was a lot of difficulties arose from the text size changing, the text location, buttons, text and buttons not lining up, so you don't know where to click. So that all like took a long time to figure out. Um, this is, the top left is one of my first designs with the um, splash screens, like the welcome screen when you come, and then you click explore to get through it. And this is my current design on the bottom right. I have this awesome design, the um, physics and engineering logo that Ashley Mumford from APS designed for me, but I couldn't get it loaded in time onto this, but it's really cool. It's in there, hopefully soon. And there's a couple more screens. This is the main menu, so you have the people, which are the interviews under that. You have Hubble, which has a lot of engineering slash physics and real world applications, communications, like satellites and such, and space exploration. And then that's an example of the um, people menu, and then you have interviews that you can click on. So while I was making this, I also still wanted the print capability, so I made most of the actual sub menus. Um, the pages they lead to into like posters that they can still print. I did use the Physics Central colors, so it ties in hopefully. 
Um, this is the communications one. There's the engineering aspects of it, and then there's the physics. I showed why it's necessary to have satellites for long distance communication, because these two stations can't talk to each other, but the satellite helps that happen. Also, this is one of my interviews with Dr. Richard Berry at Goddard. He's an astrophysicist, but he started off in um, engineering, and he had a great way of explaining how the two tie in together, especially for project science. That physics is like on one side of a cusp, and then engineering is on the other side, and together they like a person with both uh, experience in both of them would be really good at project science. Um, my experience, I really love. I love SBS. I've been a member of SBS for a couple of years now, and coming here was great because outreach is really important to me. I worked for the NASA um, Education and Public Outreach Office at Sonoma State for two years before this. And I know how important it is to show people why science is important and why they should study it. Um, coming here and being able to work on it on a national level was awesome. I got a lot of experiences out of it. People were really helpful when I interviewed people. I would email random people I got here with, that I looked up on the staff directory who had experience in both engineering and physics. And a lot of them did reply and they were really happy for me to come by and talk to them. Um, also working at American Physical Society, um, being in the building with all the other organizations, a lot of times, like, grad school shopper would be like, hey, can you come by and tell us about your experience with us? So it was really cool to have like, other places to like, have input. Also, all the lab tours are really awesome, and living in D.C., of course. And I just wanted to thank everybody at APS, and, of course, SPS, all the staff, and everyone that I interviewed for my, or the pages for my app. Thank you. Any questions? You guys can come play on the app on my computer later if you want to. <laughs> yeah. So, did you consider including any um, advice for career, um, as far as preparing for different kinds of jobs in either physics or engineering or both? I mean, is, it, is it geared towards high school students that are thinking about what classes to take? Well, I'd be afraid to write that because I just did my own switch, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't know if I could tell them the right information. But I could definitely include some links that lead them to good information about that. That would be cool. I really do want to make this more reverse, um, well-rounded and include a lot more information, but like time came to an end, so. Yeah. So will the app be available um, to the public for download at some yes. point? Yes, so as soon as I can wrap it up and package it, or hand it off, uh, it's great to be on the website and hopefully also on the like, Google Store and the apps, just like all the app stores, hopefully. Thank you. If there's no more questions.